We shot this video back in December when the sun was really low in the sky. And it isn't raining this time of year, our solar panels only get about two hours of sunlight a day. And that ain't enough to recharge our storage batteries. So this is when we switch to Plan B. It's a small hydroelectric plant powered by the same spring that supplies our drinking water. A little rain this time of year increases the flow enough that we can generate all the power we need. The system is driven by water collected in this tank, which is about 30 feet below the dam. And this is where we're going to start today to figure out if microhydro could work for you. Microhydro systems can be a little complicated. So I'm going to talk in generalities today and use rules of thumb. There are lots of sources on the web where you can get more detailed information. But if you've got a water system installed already, and you're using at least two inch penstock, you can probably use your existing system. The first step is to figure out if you've got what it takes. And that means maybe using a little math and maybe getting a little wet. Let's get started. Okay, we're down here at the discharge pipe, which comes down from our water tank. And you can see some water is flowing out right now. That's what, we, that's what the tank doesn't need. We keep this running because when we flush a toilet, take a shower, we need to fill the tank back up again. The tank goes down, this will stop because it'll be filling the tank up. When it gets up to the overflow, it comes out down here. Now what we want to see is if we open the valve up further, how much water, how much more water can we collect? That would be the water that we can use for a microhydro system. So Karen's going to turn the water on now, which will be taking more water out of the dam and we'll see how much we can collect on a gallon per minute basis. And we'll do that with this five gallon bucket. Here comes the water. So we're going to stick our bucket in and we'll just start counting and see how long it takes to fill. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, stop. Okay, nine. Okay, this is a little wet. So that means we can generate a little more than 30 gallons a minute of extra water. Probably. We gotta go check though, when we're running the system this strongly, we need to go up the dam and make sure that we're not draining the dam. Because if you're taking more water out than the stream is delivering, your pipes are gonna empty out and you won't have any water in them at all. You just have air. So you want to check so that your system is in equilibrium. No more water going in than it's coming out. That way your tank stays full. It can refill when you use a shower, wash dishes, and you have enough extra that you can run a hydroelectric system. You want to keep the system in balance. Okay, let's go back up to the tank. Okay, we're finished with the bucket. We've measured water flow. We figured out it's about 30 gallons a minute. So back to the blackboard. We've got our 30 gallons here. Now the next thing you need to measure is your height, your elevation. Where, how far above your microhydro plant is your tank? Now for us, our tank is about 160 feet above where we want to put the microhydro system. So I'm going to write that number down. 160. Now what we do is we multiply these two numbers and you end up with what? 4,800. Okay, now we're talking rules of thumb here and in the industry you use this formula, you generate 4,800 and you divide that number by 10. The answer is 480. That number, very roughly, is the wattage that you can expect to generate from your, from your microhydro system. If it collects 30 gallons of water a minute, and if it's 
the tank is 160 feet above your microhydro plant. You can get about 480 watts. But then there's some bad news. We have about 1,000 feet of delivery pipe going down the hill. We have bends and turns. We have an alternator that is not 100% efficient. So you've got to take this number and discount it for those factors, along with some others that are too complicated to go into. We're going to we discount it by 40%. Say that's our energy loss because of the system we've designed. What does that give us? It gives us 280 watts. I can't write where the darn, can I? Okay, that's it. 280 watts. That's your magic number. If you can stand to get 280 watts every hour, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, if that's enough to manage your system, then you're good to go. And that translates to about 10 amps of power 24-7. That's enough to run our laptops, read late at night, run our washing machine, and still keep our batteries charged. Now, microhydro is built around the little black wheel you see at the bottom of the screen. It's called a Pelton wheel. Water jets make the wheel spin, which turns an alternator mounted on top, which produces electricity, and then to a controller, which regulates power to the batteries. Our system also has an amp meter, which shows us how much power we're generating, a couple of circuit breakers for safety, and a small heater Heaters where the controller sends energy when it senses our batteries are charged. Ready to build your own system? Well, the first thing is pour a cement pad to put your micro unit on. Then you shanghai a couple of good friends on a bitter, cold, rainy day and get them to trench your electric connection from the pad to the shed where you've got your controller. Well, we finished our installation. We put the Micro hydro unit right here inside this box and bolted it to the concrete pad that we built. We've connected our wire to the utility shed. We've hooked it up to our breakers, our charge controller, and the heat dump. Turned the switches on so we're ready to activate the system. So all I need to do is close this up. You may be wondering why it's inside a box. The reason is Mr. Bear. He's a curious little animal and he likes to explore things that make noises. He's ripped our water tank apart a couple of times because he's heard the water going in and out. Uh, I don't want him to do it to this unit. So made a little box that we put everything in and I can lock it up and we're safe from there. Okay, we're ready to try the system out. Well, I'm at the bottom of the hill now. It's been a few days. We've had some rain and it looks like we're going to get some more, which means our little spring is producing enough water that we can start producing hydroelectricity using our little micro hydro unit which is behind me. Now the delivery for that is this black pipe. I don't know whether you can see it in the foreground. It connects to the main delivery pipe. This pipe here above it, it delivers water to the house. So what we'll do is turn on the water. We're going to make sure that our charge controllers and our breakers are on in the utility shed because a micro hydro unit needs some place to send its power. It'll burn everything out if you don't have the switches on before you start turning on the water. We've done that, so I think we're ready to go. So let's see what happens. Oh, I like that sound. Sweet. Now I don't know whether you can see the water coming out the bottom back here, but it's gone in through the black pipe drives that Pelton wheel, turning the alternator, generating electricity, and the water is discharged out the bottom back into the creek. Sort of a complete cycle. Now we have electricity until April, when the sun again is high enough in the sky that I can switch back to solar.